<laughs> hey guys, I'm Joel. In this video, I'm finally gonna be breaking in to my E46 drift wagon and doing the whole rear end, and changing all the bushings in the rear end. Right now, currently, the front diff bushings are extremely blown out, or at least that's what I think it is. They're really cracked, and every time I shift, or dump the clutch in first, it's really aggressive. And these cars are notorious for the subframe pulling through the chassis, so we need to reinforce everything in the rear end and get all that done. But it looks nice out here. I didn't know that there was snow on the river like this. It's so right here in first gear, if I just... That clunk is so bad. That <laughs> clunk is so bad. And anytime I try and drift, it's always clunking for like the first two seconds and then it kind of goes away. And I don't want it to do that because the chassis is already weak to begin with. So if it has that jumping around, it's gonna make it crack a lot easier. So I always say before you, any big project, you need to clean your workspace, make sure everything is good because it's gonna get destroyed after. So this is the mess right now currently. This is how much the E30 leaks. I need to fix all the leaks. I'm gonna be doing that soon. I just need to figure out what valve cover I'm gonna be running with the turbo up there. I don't know if I wanna stay with an M52 valve cover or if I wanna get a M50 OBD1 valve cover that's magnesium. But yeah, I'm just not entirely sure. Haven't made my decision yet on that. But this garage is an absolute disaster. We don't have the best of storage because the house is pretty small. So the garage is like the only storage we have. I do wanna get a shop eventually, but working my way up, you know? This isn't the most effective way, but it works. Self-adjusting tub. Finally, there we go. That took like a good 10 minutes. I was looking up and I saw that there was a bunch of light bulbs up there and these two lights have had blown out lights since the day I installed the LED ones. So I haven't seen them both in action, so. This is what it looks like right now. I'm really curious to see how, if it'll be noticeable at all. Okay, yeah, not bad. So it got rid of the dingy spots up high. So it just looks a little brighter, a little more alive, but it's still really dirty. <laughs> My guy Ryan pulling it out just to show. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> Damn, it's so low, it gets ripped on there. You're good. <laughs> so here we have it. My guy Ryan helped me. It's nice and clean enough. This thing, I'm trying to see how good it works, but so far it's going crazy from Harbor Freight. So now I'm just gonna go in, take the rear shocks out. It's kind of the same procedure with every rear subframe that you do. Same stuff needs to come off all the time. So brakes need to come off, e-brake needs to come off, rear shocks, and then all the mounts for everything, along with the drive shaft too, and the exhaust, so. Damn, that was tight. I'm gonna thread that back in just so I don't lose it. However fast you want. What's all that movement? What's all that movement back there? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> yeah. There we go. The troubles of having a small garage. Exhaust is gonna have to sleep outside. Yeah, I'm getting fucking blasted by that <laughs> by that light. <laughs> yeah. Can you hold that socket on top? Feed it to me. Pause, yo, hold the ratchet this way. Ugh. Fuck you, man. <laughs> hey, yo, why are you so close? <laughs> I didn't even realize you were there. 
I lit yo, you're blasting the fuck out of me. My eyes. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Pause. There's a bolt. It's a nut and bolt. Can you is it visible? I see your fucking thing, I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. There we go. I just fucking hit the ratchet right on my ribs. Using the electric ratchet like an actual ratchet. <laughs> I'm doing this with no jack because I'm lazy. No, that's a bad idea. I'm gonna get the jack. These subframe bushings look insane. And that rust does not look good either. That looks... What the hell? I think this doesn't want to come out of the diff because I need to loosen this nut right here so that the drive shaft can slide back a little bit and release it from the diff. exactly what I didn't want to happen but it just slid right off my knee the drive shaft is fully out of the way now the e-brake cables these two right here go into the chassis right there so I'm just gonna pull those out instead of taking the e-brake assembly apart inside of the rotor there's like black dust Ugh. I've never pulled these out of a chassis before so I don't know how stubborn they're gonna be Anytime you pull a vacuum line off or something like this off, it's always good to twist it before giving it the good old pull. Ow, it's so cold. Everything is so, it's so cold down here. I didn't know you were supposed to shake PB Blaster every time you use it, but now I know. Shoots way better now. While the e-brake cables are soaking over there, I'm going to take the brake caliper off so that hopefully I don't have to re-bleed anything. I don't think there's any hard lines on the trailing arm like there is on the E30. I think it's all on the chassis, so this should be able to hang there. Why is that so tight? Pull this one out just by tugging on it. It won't come out. <laughs> Ugh. 
got it. Let's go. These two are loose now. This brake line right here runs under the axle, but above the lower control arm. So I'm going to take the lower control arm off from right here at the bottom to take the caliper out and rest it on the body somewhere. That is not plain. Whoa. Wow. Wow, that was insane. There we go. And the whole purpose of this is because I want to get the brake caliper through here. Ugh, come on. There we go. That brake caliper is now not caught up in anything. The subframe can drop and it'll be separate from the caliper. This is either gonna break the nut loose or slip off. <sighs> I had to put the hammer right there to pinch the suspension so it wouldn't go up so I could get that leverage on there. Yo, what up, pussy? I'll be a custard. Damn, my ankles are fucking fried. Yeah, you can suck them too much dick. Ankles? You stupid bitch. <laughs> if you were reusing the stock toe brackets, then you'd probably want to mark that so you know a rough estimate of where your car is sitting. But I have new brackets, so it won't matter if I mark them or not. I'm really hoping there isn't a whole bunch of weight on this, but <laughs> let's see. Not bad. Oh, that wiring is not happy. Let me try and disconnect this up here. Oof. Now it's fully independent. Good to go. Everything should be disconnected right now, so I'm just gonna take the four subframe bolts out, and that's all that's left. This heater puts out so much light. That front needs to wiggle out. Oh, the e-brake cables are still kind of in there, so I almost guarantee that's what it is. This right here is one of the stupid things of working on cars that you can never predict. This right here must be getting stuck on something in there because when I pull it, It's just hitting, so it won't come out, and no matter what I do, it won't come out, so. <laughs> There's no nut or anything on it, so the, it's like something is getting caught up under the chassis over there, but what the hell? What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take the whole center console out so I can take that handbrake out and feed the wire through. By the way, YouTube recommends you channels that you watch all the time, and sometimes you don't even realize that you're not subscribed. So go down there, make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell icon to get notified whenever I upload, and yeah, let's get back into it. I can start off by moving the cup holders. These clips right here. Two more screws. Damn, that one was tight. Okay. 
So I'm just gonna take this thing off because it wasn't really doing anything with my rear handbrake never locking up. I'm guessing maybe it's because these are really old rotors and it's a really dirty surface inside of that rotor. So it's probably not locking up because of that. But regardless, if I wanna use a stock handbrake, I'll pull it like a boy from down here. When you yank it with your right arm, you have to pull it to like about here because the lever is so much longer. When I replace the rear rotors, I'm gonna see if the handbrake works locking up the tires in this short distance. I don't want it to lock up up here because it takes too much effort to pull it all the way up here. But if it could lock up like this, then I'll consider putting that handle back on, but it's not worth having a handle if you have to pull it any more than that. So because of that, and while I'm already here, I ripped out the whole cable connection thing that connect the, the button down to here because I thought that this was gonna be a good situation. But now that I'm already taking this whole assembly out and taking the handbrake out, I'm just gonna get another stock handbrake that already has a button in it from a junkyard so that I can have a handbrake in this thing again. It being manual now sucks having no handbrake because this thing rolls so easily. There we go, finally. So I'm guessing that was getting caught up right in there. I'm gonna go on there and see exactly where this is getting caught up. Bro, no way. Once I get, what? why does it come up now? So I'm guessing the handbrake was holding it in position so that it couldn't come out, but now it just came out, so. I can't do this anymore. I'm literally just gonna cut this cable out. No way does it not. My angle grinder doesn't fit. Oh my God. This is such a nightmare, y'all. So I just broke it, put a vice grip on it, twisted it until it came off. Finally. All right, we're good to go. Now let's see if this subframe will fall evenly. Oh. The cables are still caught up on the other side because I put the vice grip on the metal housing. So now the metal housing doesn't fit through the subframe because the vice grip chewed up the metal. This is really I cannot believe this right now. This is so bad alone. Finally. Let's go. This took so long. That subframe really sucked. Only because of those e-brake cables. <laughs> those things were the biggest nightmare. But now I want to see what the chassis looks like. All right. So first look. I'm looking for cracks. Obviously, we can see rust, but the rust is getting a painted damn that rust goes pretty deep too So I'm gonna grind all that rust off Maybe a crack will appear once I grind it all off with the wire wheel, but this one looks to be good There has to be a crack under that somewhere. I can't tell if those are good or not, but there's a little bit of rust everywhere so that kind of sucks yeah, it just looks rusty. I don't see any cracks though, so that's that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah, bitch. I'm gonna come in with some PB Blaster and soak everything up before I start working on it. I'm working with very limited space. It's about five degrees outside. So I gotta do all this inside. Well, 
Whenever I see people do the rear end, I never see them replace these bushings right here on the top and bottom, but they look like they could be replaced, honestly. I should not be able to move that with my hands. I probably should have loosened these axles when the subframe was still in the car, but it's still doable. It's just more annoying now. No, now this e-brake cable is stuck. I got a fix for that. There we go. Finally. While I'm here, since this little fitting doesn't fit through the subframe, I'm just going to cut it off. Here we go. Why are these so tight now though? This side was so loose. Not loose, but it just wasn't this tight. This is kind of sketchy. I hate everything about this, but. Okay, that one might uh, have a little bit too much red Loctite. You cannot be serious. Two of them? Is this gun losing power? How is this? There's no way these are this tight. They probably are. I think they are. <laughs> I think these are just insanely tight. This bushing is so crusty. <laughs> I need to take this axle out so that I can disassemble everything and I could unbolt the diff and take the diff out with this axle still in but that, I feel like that's going to make it so much harder to work. I'm already in such a confined space. I don't need to have this huge unorthodox heavy item to carry around so I'd rather just take this axle out right now. Since I put red Loctite on these, I put a little bit too much and they're really stuck on there. The impact won't even get them off so I'm going to come in with the map gas. And I'm going to heat up only this back right here. I really don't want to boil the grease inside of the axle, but we'll see. Oh man, that already is smoking. Wow. Maybe I'm just going to have to leave it as a whole unit. I'm going to leave it as... This right here is one of those situations where you want to do it one way, but because you're stubborn and you say, no, I want to do it this way, it could potentially shoot you in the foot. Like maybe I heat it up too much and destroy the seals inside the diff and destroy the axle. So I'm going to leave that like this. It's a part. Oh, man. Oh, so it actually isn't a nut on the back side. It's like one of these, I mean, it is a nut, but it's like a self-locking nut. Oh, there we go. All the bolts for the subframe are under this stool right now. And everything's apart. Now I can start taking the old bushings out and refreshing all of this i got a, a lot of grinding to do to clean all this up so i edited that whole video and it's already getting pretty long so normally whenever i'm doing these projects it's hard to section off videos because i don't want it to be extremely long but there's still a lot of work left i still have to clean up the whole subframe change all the bushings and do all the work to the chassis welding 
and reinforcing everything there. So I'm working on it. I'm working in editing. So I'm gonna try and get the next video out as soon as possible. I appreciate you guys so much for watching. Leave a like, follow me on Instagram right here at E30Joel to stay up to date with everything I'm doing. I showed off that I was doing this a few days ago on my Instagram. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned.